Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of the Human Physiology video tutorials with me, Dr. Amir Sandhu. Now today I'm actually going to go through the flow mediated dilatation technique using high resolution Doppler ultrasonography and specialist software to look at the vascular diameters. Okay, so let's get straight into it. The first thing that you need to do is to get the ultrasound machine uh, set up correctly. So what we need to do is have a look at the frequency and adjust that. Uh, we need to look at the depth settings and we also need to have a look at the gain settings settings as well to ensure that we get the best quality images. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to adjust the frequency so that we bring it down to as close to as 5 megahertz as possible. Now on this machine the lowest frequency is 7.3 megahertz which is uh, sufficient uh, but literature recommends that 5 megahertz is the optimum frequency to image the brachial artery. Now we also need to be uh, paying attention to the depth of the ultrasound image which can be adjusted uh, up or down and in our case we actually want the depth to be 3.5 centimeters. Now other adjustments can include the gain settings so we can optimize the uh, the brightness, the contrast of the ultrasound image, just to make sure that we've got very clear uh, blacks and very clear whites in the particular image. Now it's also very important to make sure that we have a stereotactic clamp to keep the ultrasound probe secure when you're doing the actual assessment. Now this clamp here is specially adapted to tighten as you turn this knob here. So as you turn this, we can actually clamp this into place and this would mean that that's quite rigid. Now what we also need to do is get the ultrasound probe into the actual probe holder. Now what you will notice with the ultrasound probe is it contains a very specific orientation marker okay and this tells us that the image that we're getting on the screen actually matches with the anatomy as you're doing the image for real now for the purposes of this test this orientation marker should face towards the participant or patient so it's very important that when you put this into the probe holder that the orientation of the probe is correct and you would literally just slot it into place and then you will tighten down this uh, locking clamp here and you'd be ready to go to do the assessment. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is you need to get your participant comfortable lying supine on the bed. Okay, so you need to make sure that they're in a very nice position. Uh, you, you can also use another kind of arm holder to ask them to place their arm across the side here uh, and of course you can have another pillow here which just gives a little bit of support to the participant but also when you're scanning it allows you to rest your own arm for the nine minutes that this technique is going to take to perform. Now the next most important thing is to put the blood pressure cuff around the wrist. Now several laboratories actually put the cuff around the forearm but research studies have shown that it's actually the wrist occlusion which is related to nitric oxide mediated dilation so it's very important that we put the wrist cuff on uh, before we actually start scanning so I'm just going to pop this on the participants arm so literally just like this and then you can leave this just hanging across the side as we'll be using it later on okay so what the first thing that we actually need to do is make sure that we get some ultrasound gel onto the probe so I always liken this to putting some toothpaste onto a toothbrush put it on nice and neatly uh, pop that back into here. Now what we're now going to do is actually scan for the brachial artery which is going to be somewhere in this region of, of the arm. Now the best way to try and find it is start from the top and hold the probe so that it's level from the top of the bicep. Okay so look at the participant's bicep and try and have the angle of the probe uh, in line with the, um, with the top of the bicep. So you will then start from the top and you will scan down now what we can also do is use color Doppler. Okay, now the color Doppler will enable us to ensure that we have uh, the artery that's inside because if we had a vein, then what we would do is as we compress the probe into the arm the vein would disappear with the artery you carry on getting this pulsing uh, that we can see here so this is the brachial artery you would adjust this green uh, box which is the region of interest and what you can actually see is uh, two colors blue and red now remember the mnemonic bart blue away 
away from the probe, red is going towards the probe, okay? So the blood that's, so this tells us in a way the direction of the blood flow, okay? So that's extremely important. So as blood is being pumped from the left ventricle of the heart, it's coming towards the probe, it's the red color that we see, and then the blue color is that, is that it's going away from the probe towards the, the, um, the microvasculature of the forearm and of course the hands as well. So it's very important just to kind of get yourself used to, to that anatomy. So we start the scanning. Okay, we, we are literally searching for the brachial artery. We're trying to optimize uh, a nice clear image so that we get nice borders, vascular borders. So we get a clear lumen. So I'm going to get rid of the color and I'm going to adjust the gain slightly. And we, what we're looking for is very nice defined walls of the artery. Uh, on the, the near wall and the far wall. Now we can adjust the focus. So you can see this little arrow here moving up and down as I turn this knob. Now as I move this arrow towards, the, uh, towards where the artery is, the image should become clearer, which is what we can see here. So now the ultrasound beams are being focused directly on the artery. Okay, so if there's any problems with, if, if you haven't got a parallel um, line going across the screen, you can make some small adjustments. You can either use your other hand to try and uh, to rotate the probe within the probe holder, uh, or you can, whilst it's in its loose state, the clamp's in its loose state, you can, with, you can turn the probe round um, in several different planes to get um, the, a, a good quality image. Now, once you've got a good quality image, the next thing that we need to do is tighten that probe, uh, or sorry, tighten the clamp holder like we talked about earlier, okay? Whilst trying to maintain the image, so you've got to have a very steady hand for this, and depending on what clamp you use, you've then got to obviously lock that clamp into place. Once you've done that, you should hopefully have a nice, uh, good quality image in which to record the baseline diameters. So the next portion of the technique basically involves a, a 120 second or two minute measurement of the baseline artery diameter. You also have the uh, specific automated edge detection software to record those vascular diameters and that will help you in post-processing for the images. Um, so once you've recorded the diameters, you are then going to inflate this blood pressure cuff. Okay, now, Generally, we inflate the blood pressure cuff to about 50 millimeters of mercury above the participant's systolic blood pressure, uh, but I tend to go to around two, somewhere between 220 to 240 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so I just literally squeeze this. Um, now the blood flow to the hand has been stopped. Okay, and we're gonna stop that blood flow to the hand for approximately five minutes. Um, after the five minutes, when we release the blood pressure cuff, there's gonna be a sudden increase in blood flow through the artery, which the ultrasound probe is going to detect. And that sudden increase in blood flow is gonna exert shear stress on the brachial artery uh, or on the endothelial cells, which will cause the release of nitric oxide and then we'll get vasodilation. So in this section, you've just got to make sure that you're, you've got a very nice image, it's nice and clear, you're monitoring the blood pressure because with this pressure cuff, you can sometimes get leakage of air. So you've just got to give it a quick little squeeze just to bring it back up again. Um, and then you're basically just making sure that your arm is comfortable. So it's very important that from a so ultrasonographer's point of view, you know, you're relaxed so that you can get a good quality image. Your back is supported, your arm is supported by the pillow, and you're keeping steady pressure on your hand so that you can make sure that the, the movement stays nice and secure. And also if the participant moves as well, you can then account for uh, any movements very quickly. So that's this phase of the test. Now let's assume that we've inflated the cuff for five minutes, the five minutes are over. We then make sure we've got a good quality image. We just make sure that the software is ready to record those peak diameters, and then we release the cuff. Okay, now the participant should feel a very warm gush of blood into her hand, so she'll feel like a pins and needle sensation. Okay, and what we've got to do now is ensure that we keep a very steady image because it's within the next three minutes 
that the peak diameter will occur. So at this point, the nitric oxide is being released by the, blood, by the endothelial cells. It will be diffusing into uh, the smooth muscle, which is actually seen on the ultrasound image as the very solid white line, because that's the media, the smooth muscle layer of the vessel. And after about 60 to 90 seconds, you'll start to see an increase in the diameter of the artery. You won't see it visually, but the software will be monitoring the diameters in real time. So when we look at the data afterwards, we'll be able to see the increase in uh, the diameter of the vessel at that specific point in time. So that's really all there is to it. Um, the main thing is that the ultrasound settings are, are optimized, that your scanning is uh, consistent, and you go through all of the steps in a systematic manner and hopefully you'll then be able to perform the flow media to dilatation test uh, successfully. Now just a final thought, when you're holding the ultras ultrasound probe it's very important to keep your hands and your fingers in a particular position. Now the best way to get a stable image is to actually have your index finger just across here, your thumb on the other side of the, the probe or the probe holder and then these three fingers you would literally have just underneath the probe to support the probe and then you would scan in this position. Now if I move my hand away essentially I'm in this position, index finger on the left side, the thumb on the right side and I've got these three fingers curled up together to hold the probe or to just to steady the probe and to keep it supported. So that was it for this part where we went through the steps for the flow media to dilatation. Please stick around for the second part where we're actually going to talk about how the images are analysed with the software. I'll hope to see you then.